a lot of people really hate spiders, and the reason for that is almost certainly jealousy. It's because one of the world's most amazing materials comes out of their butts, and nothing we do as humans will ever compare. Welcome to another episode of She's Got Legs, where we take a look at the most misunderstood creatures on our planet. I'm your host, Caitlin Henderson, and I still adore spiders, even though they make me feel talentless and inadequate. Let's talk silk. Every spider produces silk, and it's an amazing substance. It's renowned for being an incredibly strong and flexible material that's got the drop on steel, but that makes it sound like it's just one kind of dude, which it isn't. It's a whole bunch of dudes, and we're gonna meet them. But first of all, what is it, and how does it come out of spider butts? Good question, I'm glad you asked. You guys are such a good audience. Silk is a protein for starters, which makes it complex and whimsical. It's produced in the spider's silk glands as like a silk soup, and it doesn't harden into a fiber until it's tugged out of the spinnerets. The spinnerets are the spider's silk spinning organs. Most spiders have three pairs, and they're quite mobile and flexible. Some of them look like weird little butt fingers. Being so dexterous means spiders are able to place silk precisely where they want it and build all kinds of amazing structures. So I said that silk is not just one kind of dude, but some spiders do only produce a few basic kinds of silk, and those are used for simple tasks like lining a burrow or wrapping their prey. For some spiders, things get much more complex, and they're producing several different types of silk, each for its own specific task. So let's meet the crew. One of the really important kinds of silk is major ampullate silk, and this is the impressively strong and flexible stuff. And spiders leave this behind as they move around their world as a drag line or a guide, and it's also used as the structural sections in orb webs. Minor ampullate silk is used as a scaffolding when building orb webs, which is then taken down. A cineform silk is used in fine sheets for wrapping prey and making stabilimenta in the web. Tubuliform silk is used in making egg sacs. Piriform silk is used to make attachment discs, which is how spiders stick silk to a surface. Aggregate silk is kind of special because it's a glue that's used to coat other silk and make it sticky. Flagelliform silk is a really springy silk that's used to capture prey in webs without breaking. Each of these silks has a different composition and is suited to performing different tasks, which can be highly specialized. And it's amazing how spiders know exactly which silk is called for in each circumstance. Another important kind of silk is cribbelet silk. Only some spiders can produce this silk, which is combed out of a plate called the cribellum by specialized hairs on the back legs of the spider. Cribbelet silk is like spider fairy floss. It's not sticky, it's woolly, and it captures prey by trapping it in fibers. It can actually physically fuse to the outside of insects and sort of like glue to them. Silk is an amazing tool that can be used by spiders to perform all kinds of tasks and live in incredibly diverse ways. For instance, you wouldn't know it to look at them, but spiders can fly. When they're young, many spiders disperse away from their siblings by air in a process called ballooning. To achieve this, spiders let out silk strands which interact with electric fields and lift them into the air. Spiders can travel huge distances this way or they can land a couple of meters to the left next to their most annoying brother. It's a toss up. Silk is most famously used as a tool for prey capture, but it's not just limited to those big traditional round orb webs, though those are spectacular, don't get me wrong. For instance, net casting spiders make a fibrous net that they throw over prey that walks underneath them. Ray spiders spring load their webs and rocket it into prey that flies past, and they're able to reload it again if they miss. Some burrowing spiders create trip lines that radiate out from the burrow entrance and tell the spider what's walking by using vibrations. And I can't emphasize enough how amazing silk is, and I think I'm gonna become a used silk salesman. Do we need more silk facts? We need more silk facts. The strongest silk that's been studied is produced by Darwin's bark spider from Madagascar, and not far behind that is the silk of the golden orb weavers, which is also impressively strong, but has one other thing going for it, it's gold. In 2012, the silk from over a million live golden orb weavers was harvested without harming the spiders and used to produce a cape, and the fabric of this is completely naturally gold though wearing it apparently doesn't give you any spider superpowers, so I'm not sure why they bothered. Spiders can also recycle their silk. It's a protein, so it's a huge waste of resources to just make a web and then bugger off on it when you're done. So as much as possible, spiders reuse their silk by eating it, and the components go straight back to the silk glands to make more. Thanks for watching She's Got Legs. These videos are funded by our supporters at Patreon, so check out the link in the video description if you wanna be part of the project. Supporters at the Myriapod tier and above now get a monthly postcard from me featuring something awesome I found recently and some details about it and what I've been 
been up to. So consider that if you want to keep up with the circus. Let me know in the comments if you've got any more questions about Silk and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and my other social media, I'll put the links below. Bam, got the words out of my mouth. Did the words good? Words dip, words in the right direction. Good wording. Shut